Welcome to Conquering Mount Scrapmore with Brenda. I'm Brenda and today we're doing a, a subscriber requested video. I guess this person has got a 301A and now needs to know how to thread the machine and wind a bobbin. And there's a few other things I'm going to try and throw in there just to help this person along. So the first thing we're going to do is try and wind that bobbin. Now if you have a 301A or a featherweight or any of those older vintage machines, all of those uh, re user manuals are online and they're free for downloading, right? So if you have, for in instance, the 1915 Singer that I have, we were able to download all sorts of things off of the internet for it that was all free. like. How to, how to put a bobbin in, how to do this, how to do that, you know, basically how to oil and maintain your, your sewing machine, how to put the needle in properly, properly so it will sew, because sometimes these old vintage machines are a little temperamental. So, so come on a little closer, we're going to start winding a bobbin first. All right, the first thing you have to do when you're winding a bobbin is to un or disengage this flywheel, right? That's the flywheel is what makes the needle go up and down. So you want to disengage that just by like just by giving it a twist towards you. Then you want to pull up this bobbin wheel. Now, this has a little rubber tire on it and it will press it up against the flywheel. It will press up against the flywheel and spin the bobbin area. So let's get this. So here we go. We've got some thread, some beautiful Orofil thread, and I'm going to feed it through this here, and just just like that. And I want to connect it. I want some tension on it. I just don't want it loose. And then I just put the thread through one of the holes, like this. And then I put it onto this area here, and I have totally lost my, my, oh there it is, my foot pedal. So I'm putting this up here like that, and I'm holding on to this thread, right? Now I engage my foot pedal, and sometimes I gotta push it a little bit. Now it does have a break. There's the break, is right here. When the thread starts touching that break, it will stop winding the bobbin, right? So now all I have to do is cut my thread, pull the bobbin off, put this back down, and what I'm going to do is I'm going to put it in the bobbin. Now I'm going to have it so the thread is on top, right? like this, then I'm going to get my bobbin holder and put it with these notches this way. It goes through the first notch and then down through this and goes right in there. I'll do it again for you. So my thread is on top. My thread's on top. My camera, okay. So then it goes into the bobbin holder up through that first notch right there and in there. Now the tension on this should be, you should be able to hold it like that, just over your hand, right? If you, if you jerked it, it would come loose, right? And I like my tension on my bobbin just a little bit longer. So then, since we wound the bobbin here, I'll just, I'll re-engage the, the machine Okay, I'll re-engage this machine because we're now going to want to sew, right? And then we'll put the bobbin in, we'll put the bobbin with the holder inside the machine. Okay, now there is a little divot or a little thing you grab onto. It opens up just like this, right? 
And you grab it and you've got the thread out and then you just push this in and just give it a little nudge and there you are you're ready your bobbins in let me show you this again you've got this thing right here make sure your thread is on this side of the bobbin and then you just push it in just like that okay now I'm going to show you when you're when they you, people sometimes when they clean their machine they take off their faceplate this little divot or this little thing right here has to be in that space it must be in this space right here otherwise your machine won't sew right so this is very important that this lines up in between here and when you're putting on your face plate again you have to make sure it's there so otherwise it's it's you end up with the world's biggest thread nest ever on the planet so that's how this goes right okay so now this is our thread because we've just wound a bobbin we're going to make sure that when we move this wheel the flywheel that the needle and this arm go, are going up and down right so we want to make sure that's connected correctly so we put our thread on the back spool holder right and then we hook this back hook here and we go to the center hook and we go down around between the there's two little discs and you want to get that thread right inside those two little discs right like that and then there's a little wire here you want it to catch on the wire and bring it up and hook inside right so yeah I don't know if you can see what I just did here but let's try it again right let's I'll show you from the hook down so it's the two center plates that's your tension plates there's a little wire and you pull it up and over and now you pull the thread towards you and it hooks inside that tension plate perfectly then you put it behind this loop now I there's an eye that I feed this through on top right and then a lever and then another lever and another lever and there's usually another fourth one here but mine broke off and now this machine will feed to the needle from the, the right side to the left and go through and now you bring up the bobbin thread just by rotating the flywheel towards you and it pulls up that bobbin thread and you're ready to sew well, one thing I'm going to mention about this machine and I don't know if a featherweight does it but the flap side of a Schmetz needle because I use Schmetz this side this flat edge right one side is round and one side is flat that's got to go on the left side it's got a point left if it will go in the other way and that'll create a problem because now your machine won't sew and it just slips in very neatly and off we go we're, we're good okay another important thing you have to do with these vintage machines after every eight hours for me it's like every day but after every eight hours you're going to pull out your sewing machine oil now I use this oil in particular because I really really like it but there's places where you oil now one of the the places here and if you're not is right there where that little red dot is I put the cap back on the oil because I don't need to oil this machine right now so it's right there one drop one drop then one two three one drop one drop one drop they're right in a row so you make sure all those are are moisture with oil because they're the these four or these three here are really important because they're part of the flywheel mechanism and so are these but I mean this is important now on the base of the machine you have a hole right here here like there's four holes each one gets a drop and then this one over here right so after eight hours of runtime, let's so let's say you're a sewer that only sews two 
hours a night and you know after work well after every four days you should be oiling your machine and then you don't have problems with it with me because I'm sewing all day long most days then I'm oiling constantly right and I never have a problem with my machines because I keep them oiled I do take them in for uh, lubrication uh, like once a year because there's grease areas that I can't reach to be packed and I do get my husband to blow out the machine uh, every every month but I am going to show you this now on the new machines when you open this side here you see how the thread goes all in the thread on the vintage machines do not go inside the machine so if your thread is in there somehow, it shouldn't be on a vintage, right? So let's just get this closed up. But that's another place to blow out and clean every time. When I'm in the bobbin area, every time I change my bobbin, I wipe this area out the best I can. Just to keep it clean. And <coughs> One other last thing that I want to cover with these, you know, threading and, you know, making a winding a bobbin and threading your machine is actually the bobbin case. This this particular case is a Samanko 45750. Now this is the one that actually fits the 301 and the 301A singers. This one works perfectly. You can get knockoffs, I guess is what they call it, or third party ones that sometimes they work Sometimes they don't, and for average sewing, lightweight sewing, they probably will work. But if you're going to do quilting, heavy duty like quilting, and you know hours of quilting with the the knockoff or the third party bobbin, not it's not going to be a happy time for you. So I'm just going to get my cameraman hopefully show this, or there's a difference on the bobbins. And we'll try and put that in a picture of it so that you can actually see the difference in the in these two bobbins. I this one for me I can use it to piece, but it doesn't do any quilting. It just it it drives me crazy trying to quilt it. Where this one is an original one, it works perfectly still. Um I wouldn't play around with your tension too much and if you do have to play with your tension because it's too tight or too loose, uh, it's uh, lefty loosey, righty tighty, lefty loosey and only adjust to the face of a clock, right? Like, you know, how a clock has 12 numbers around one, two, three, don't just don't like crank it right over and then, you know, then try to crank it back. Just do small adjustments on, on this. So, anyways, I hope this was helpful, and I hope you enjoyed watching this. This is not. This was kind of an unusual request for me. I mean, it was a lot of fun to do, but at the same time, it's like, how do I do this? How do I explain all this? Anyways, I hope you have a fabulous week ahead, and go f sew something just beautiful and have fun. Okay, bye. So, I really do hope you've enjoyed this video that you just watched. If you want an invitation to the International Stitch Marathon, please comment in, the, in below the video. I would love to send you an invitation to this really fun event. A bunch of YouTubers and I have gotten together and we're going to have the best time ever on March 4th, 2022 from 9 a.m. to 9 p.m. Mountain Standard Time. It's going to be a blast and we're hoping very much that you come and join us. But the only way to get an invitation is if you comment below. But if you enjoyed this video, share, like, and subscribe. We're um, so overjoyed that you're back with us and you're watching again. It was, it's been such a lovely journey that I've been on. And if you want to see more videos like this, or videos where I show you my pattern, my very beginner friendly pattern called Barn Swallows, you know, we'll comment as well on those. Okay, you have a fabulous day and a great week. Bye!